Hi class, we're continuing on with our Excel Module 11 project, and we have our worksheet formatted here. We've been adding controls. If you remember, um, we used the backstage menu options to add the developer menu to our toolbar, and that gave us lots of options, and we've used some of those options to create forms controls radio buttons and check boxes and control buttons on our input form. So we're going to use this form to let our users enter data about prospects for customers and then we're going to save that data. So that's where we are now is to the point where we want to figure out how to save the data. So if somebody fills out this information, um, what are we going to do with it? You know, we can't keep 700 copies of this worksheet, we need to put that data as a row in another spreadsheet or someplace else so that we can keep it all together and we can sort it and do all those other great things that we like to do with data on our data tab. So we wouldn't be able to do that if we just kept it in the format of this form. So we need to be able to save it all somewhere. So we're going to record that input from our user. Now, in order to get ready for that, we're going to name some cells on our form, our input form here, so that we're not just using cell numbers and references because that would be too confusing. And then we'll do some other great things. Now, we're going to be assigning these names to our ranges and cells. We're going to try to do it automatically. We'll see if that works out. You can, whenever you're looking at the textbook, you may have seen this already. It took me a while. But you can click on that plus sign to see the full list, the enlarged view. And the first time I did that, it thinking about it, it really done. But we're going to need to do that with some of the Display some of the tables here in this module. Okay, so these are the cell names we're going to be supplying. And if you notice, if you look down here in our existing worksheet, we have column names that match those already. So we're going to try to use those column names to um, create our if we can do that. And then we're going to add some cell references. So we're going to say, a whatever is in cell C3, we're going to set that equal to this data here in 40. And that way we're going to create a piece of information about this prospect. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to get started. And as we start, you'll notice over here in column W, the system has automatically kept track of all of the different text properties or captions that we used for our different checkboxes and radio buttons. So these data lists have already been created for us. So let's select the range W11 through W13, our contact information range, and let's name this. And the contact method. Now, in the same way, I want to take this range W3 through W8, and we're going to name this information source. Underscore source. Okay. Now that's given us those two ranges. I'm going to click on that other information. Now let's select our range down here, the and we want to start A39, and we're going to select all the way through to H40. H40. 
H. No one. Uh oh. Control Z. That's not what I wanted to do, was it? Try that again by clicking inside my cell. And now I'm in H. And I want down. 40. Did the things I wanted to select. Now I want to go to our formulas tab. And on our formulas tab, we should be able to find this button create collection. And what we're going to do is generate names. You see the helpful information there. Automatically generate names from the selected cells. Okay, so I'll go name. Create from the top row. Should have that right here. Our name. First underscore name, street address, perfect. So those were the things that we wanted to be named. I'm going to check our list and make sure that that. H40 should be named email at. That's our last. So that's good. And then we need to create our cell references. And in our cell reference, again, we're going to be setting up um, a connection between where the user enters the data and where the data gets saved. Down here is a row. So for cell C3, this is going to be equal to A40. And name will be B40. C40. City will be D40. Now let's go to our state. F6. It's going to be E40. And our zip code, H6, will be equal. Okay. Seems like we should be using our names, huh? I'm going to expand this. Now in row 7, our phone number. to G40 and our email address H40. Now that's associated to all the different data fields so that we can type things in. And let's see, we already created our W13 w range. Looks like we're all set there. Now that's going to record our user input for all of these data items up here at the top that are kind of textual pieces of information. But we also need to record our user's input for these different choices that we've given them. And so that's going to be recorded in one cell. And we're going to be using an index. So if the user checks email, that index value will be set to 1. If they check U.S. mail, it will be set to 2. And if they select telephone, it will be set to 3. So we'll be able to tell which option they chose. And we do that because it's more logical to save one number like that than it is to save a bunch of string info. It makes things easier to change in the log. So that index value is what we're going to be saving and interpreting. We're going to save our um, contact by option in cell I-41.
we can do it just by any one of these option buttons. So with our email, let's right click on it and choose format control. Now we want to go to this control tab. We're not already there. And we want to link this to cell I-41. And we're going to do an absolute reference there so that we know for sure. Now we only needed to link one of those option buttons that cell and that's going to take care of all of them. all right now let's do i40 and a little bit different now in i40 we're going to say we want to do something a little different here. So in our formula bar, we're going to say this is going to be equal to the index using our contact method area and I41. So whatever value is saved in I41, we're going to use that as an index to look up the associated text value. We're going to close the parentheses for that function call. And press enter. Oops. Let me undo that because I was in I-41. I-41 is where we've associated email and we want to use that to populate I-40. So I should have gone to I-40 and then in I-40 I'm going to Want to format the control on that? Okay, so then in I forty, that's where I want it. formula that I want to look up the contact method based on the value in I forty one. And that's going to avoid that circular reference. I was referring to the same cell for that one. So that should give us a good response there. So it's kind of convoluted, isn't it? The user's going to click on one of these radio buttons, and what's going to be saved down here in I 41 is a value 1, 2, or 3. We're going to use that value 1, 2, or 3 to look up in this list to decide what save. Kind of a roundabout way for us to have to do it. Sometimes I do. Okay, now let's try root box. There are all these things here in root box. Starting with our trend show event, I'm going to right click on it and choose format control in my control tab. I'm going to say when it's checked, I want to link this with J41. So again, we're going down another row there and using that extra area. It is a word. And now that I've got that set, I can click in cell J40, the one right above that, and enter my formula that I want you to. Use the index function to search the information source 
area for the value in a 41. That gives us one of the values from our list. Okay, and then lastly, we have our check boxes down here that we would like to record information for. So let's see how we're going to make those work. And they're already associated with each other. We can right click the first one and choose Format Control. Now, how do we want this one? To I'm not sure if we want to have it when it's checked. We'll just put our cell link in there and say that it's A40. Now, for our other checkboxes, we're going to do the same thing because we can have more than one checkbox checked. So it's not the same as a radio button. We have to have a specific path for each checkbox. So for the antihistamine checkbox, we'll be using cell L40. For the antihistamine checkbox, using cell M40. And lastly, for our antithyroid, I don't think that's Thing. We'll use N40. So now we've got all of these checkbox areas set up. Save our workbook because we've been doing a lot of work. All right, so we're about ready to enter some data. We've got all of our controls associated with right here on our spreadsheet where we can keep track of user input and be able to move that input to another area. In order to make that happen, we're going to have to write some Visual Basic code. And we use VBA or Visual Basic for Application. And Visual Basic for Applications is like um, a program within a program because it gives you a whole lot of capability within Excel and within the other Office products. Now, a lot of people like to print out code to look at, so that's fine if that's something you like to do. We're going to take a look first at our first Visual Basic procedure. And a procedure is just a logical chunk of code that will be executed when something happens, when an event occurs. The events that we'll have would be like clicking our button. When somebody clicks that button, we want to run a procedure in response to that event. So we're going to enter that code using the Visual Basic Editor. And we get to the Visual Basic Editor in the developer ribbon. The developer. Now, do you see it? We've got Visual Basic. We're going to be getting into that. Now, once we get into the Visual Basic Editor, it's a full screen editor that has um, a whole set of capabilities and options and things, features that are available to it. Whenever we create these procedures, it can also be considered a macro. So we'll be creating an, a macro enabled Excel work. And you might have seen warnings in the past about that when you've opened workbooks saying, you know, are you sure you want to enable macro? So realize this is something that is taking you in down that road where you're creating a macro enabled spreadsheet and you may see warnings. Now, because our buttons are going to initiate events, this is going to be considered an event driven program. And oftentimes, no matter what kind of program we're writing, whether it be 
procedural or functional or event driven. We want to write down our code plan kind of on a piece of paper, and we can consider this pseudocode or just planning out our code. In looking at the textbook again, if I um, expand that table so that I can see all of the information from our textbook, I see the code that I'm going to need to enter. So I'm going to close that for a moment and look at the instructions, and then we'll come back and look at that code. Now, as we create code, we'll be entering comments, and comments begin with the word REM, a remark, or an apostrophe. And that's a visual basic rule, syntax, visual basic. So comments are important. And they'll be used to document our code and their good overall programming practice. So we will try to get in that using those. Okay, so we're already looking at our developer tab. Let's click the design mode button. We're in design mode. So far, we've just been kind of working in the had to be concerned about. Sometimes if we've protected things or done things to our worksheet, we might have re-enter design mode. Now let's click on the step one button to select that button, what we're working on. And when we do that, after we've selected that button, we can click on the view code button. Now that's going to display the Visual Basic for Applications Editor. Now here's our Visual Basic for Applications Editor. And across the top, we have our new menu bar that just has to do with Visual Basic for Applications in our toolbar. And over here on the side, we have information about this workbook and the different things that are going on. It tells me what my different sheets are named. And then here is my actual code window. Now in this code window, <coughs> I'm going to be writing the actual code that I want to write. Let me zoom in a little bit on that picture over here. As we type in our code, you're going to see your comments are in green. You'll have private sub at the beginning of your event procedure and end sub at the end, and those will be inserted automatically. Now, up here at the top, we have a drop down list that is our object arrow, so we could maybe change it if we were wanting to work with a specific object. In our case, we want to be working with command button one, and then what kind of event. Do we want to be working with having to do with command button? Well, the default event for a button is click. So the editor went ahead and created this procedure for us, put in the private and the end of code. So now we're ready. Type in our code. Put our code in. Go back and maximize view. Now, as we begin looking at our code, we've got a starting of some comments. So let's put those in above our private set. So I'm going to click so that my insertion arrow is right there before the P, and I'm going to press Enter to open a new line above that. And I'm going to type the single quote or apostrophe and put in the comments that they have here. Enter prospect contact information button procedure. Author. And I want you to put your name.
And then if I were looking, I would know whose it was because they're going to look pretty similar, right? Since we're copying this exact same code. And the date created, they have 11, 12, 2017. We'll copy that. Run from. And this is going to be instructions on how we would run this. We would run it from the prospect recorder worksheet by clicking button labeled. Step one, click to enter contact information. You can see they're getting very specific in their comments, documenting what's going on. Now we're going to document what the function is. When executed, this procedure enters contact information for the prospect. And then we're going to leave an empty line there to help with our readability. All right, all of this event procedure or the routine that we have here is going to consist of range statements. They have a specific format. They start with an uppercase R and is the word range. Then we have an open parenthesis and then open double quote. Now we're going to put one of our, our cell names. Remember how we named our cells automatically using the headings? We're going to use those cell names here within these double quotes. So first in our last name cell. Now notice I'm closing that double quote here. Not letting me zoom in. Well, it won't let me zoom in, so I'll just keep going. So we have that column or that cell name within double quotes. And then we close our parentheses. So now our cell name is enclosed within a set of parentheses and a set of double quotes. Then we use a period to say that looking at that cell, I want you to access its value property. And I'm going to give you that information with an input box. Let me type this in and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so you can see right under where you're typing that it's giving you the information. The IntelliSense editor is saying what you have to type. So after the keyword input box, First thing within our parentheses is prompt that our user is going to be presented in this input box asking them for information. It's going to be the word last name. Now, next is going to be enter. So that'll be our title. And then we have a comma. So that means that we're not giving it anything for the default. And we have another comma. So where are we getting to? Uh, giving us our X position back up here. And our Y position. And then after 6,000, we can close parentheses because we're done. Okay, so let's do that again. The next range statement we want to supply is for our first name, L. And we want to set its value. 
and we want to use an input box to do that. And we want the input box prompt to say first name. The title will say enter. And then we'll have two commas there and our X position on our XY coordinate on the screen is going to be 800 and our Y position will be 6,000. Now you could try different settings for those numbers so you can see where that moves that input box around on your screen. And anything that you're interested in like that, you know, <clears throat> just try it. That's the best way to learn things. Save first, you know, but always good to try things. Now this input box that I'm working on here is for our street address. And it's going to be very similar. 800. Now you notice that they're being very consistent about where that input box is being displayed because as a user, it can be quite distracting if it's bouncing around everywhere on the screen. You know that. Well, I don't know about you, but I think I've typed enough. So I'm going to select this line and do that with Control C. And then I'm going to come down and paste it using Control V. This one will become my city. And then I can paste again. And after city, we want state. Then zip code. Notice here that we have to make sure we're matching what our cell's name is. And our cell is currently named with uppercase VIP. And we want a, our prompt to look a little different. So those don't have to match exactly. What has to match exactly is this data within the um, double quotes has to match our cell name exactly. The only thing that's hard to match is anything else here. Now we're going to be asking for the telephone. And email address. And that should do. Now that blank line is fine, but I'll go ahead and eliminate it. Now I want to save this. And then I'm going to go over to our spreadsheet. We run it. We run it. Oh, there it is. So there's our input box name. First name. Now, got everything input there, and look, there's our data for Joe. So it's been saved the way we want. Go back to design mode, and that should ease things up. Let me do some 
control Z in here. Shouldn't hurt anything. Now we had saved everything. When it, I'm just, you know, I'm just worried about this data down here. I guess it's okay, right? You can just have fields named. This isn't causing it to be. It should be okay. I was just testing out the application and everything looks like it's working so far so good. Now, the way our buttons are set up here, we're going to, that was our step one. Now, what else do we have going on? Step two says, use these option bullets, check boxes, to answer questions. And then step three is to click to submit. So we're going to need another procedure for step three. Sorry, I was just looking at the instructions, so we can do it a lot of different ways. I'm just going to click on that button and use view code. Now, I want to move my cursor down past our command button one procedure, and let's create one for command button two. Change this drop down, command button two, and there's our command button two event procedure. Now again, this one is going to have some comments and some great information for us in the enlarged view. I want my comments to go above my procedure. So again, I'm going to set my insertion point right there above it. And this is the submit button procedure. Okay, so this is run from the prospect recorder worksheet. By clicking the button labeled step three to submit information. And then our function, when executed, this procedure submits new information to the prospect list. So we have our primary prospect list sheet that we want to add this data to. So we have it now where we gather all that information from our user using the input boxes, and now do some stuff with it. So for my command button two, I'm going to start out and using that range command. And I'm going to say, select the range A40 to O40.
Ooh, I'm missing double quotes there. Okay, so in our range command, within our parameter list, we're going to be supplying the cell range that we want to do, perform this action on. And our cell range is from A40 to O40, and the action we want is to select that cell. Now we're going to use that selection to do a copy. And we're going to specify which sheets are involved here. So our prospect list sheet, we're going to make it visible. So we've had this sheet, or we will anyways, hiding behind the scenes that nobody can see. And we're going to make it visible. We're going to activate it. it means it should pop up on the screen. And then we're going to do a selection of range A2 to N2. So notice it was the same syntax as the select. It's just that we had to add the sheets specification to the beginning of it, right? Specify that it wasn't this actual sheet that we're working in. Now that we have that range selected, we can paste. Now these are some keywords that we have to type exactly right. So this should be an equal sign. Now what we're doing here is basically giving Excel our paste parameters. We're saying that we want to do a paste of this information using these specific parameters. Excel paste values. That's out. Operation equal L none. Skip blanks. We want to set that to false. And finally, our transpose. We want to set that to false. So, all of those are just different paste options that we have to specify in our syntax. Get that off. Now it's happy with it. Okay, now we're going to take that selection and not a bold font. Again, in our prospect list sheet. Okay, we want to use our prospect list sheet and activate the range at cell A2. Now, whenever the IntelliSense editor pops up a drop down like this and you want to use the data that's there, you can press tab or enter space, many different things drop that data into your code so that you don't have to type it and use that to help speed up your coding. Okay, so we basically just inserted that row that we had um, selected earlier. Now we're going to change which sheet we're looking at.
Let's set our prospect list visibility to false. So not Lacey, false. So it'll disappear. And our prospect recorder sheet, our awesome sheet that we've been working on, we're going to select it. Now we're going to clear it out. So the range I41 to J41, we want to clear the contents. All of this data that we've gathered, A40 through H40. I'm going to clear the contents. Finally, we want to activate range J8. And save our work. So awesome program, we're prompting our data for all of this input and then, or prompting our user I mean for all this input data, saving it kind of as one value and then we're taking that and pasting it into another worksheet where we're keeping track of all of these different prospects. So it's kind of our main master list. All right, so I want to make sure and save. And I'm going to come back here and I'm continuing on with Joe. I'll say that I want him to be U.S. mail. And billboard into his name. You've designed mode, is that good? There it was. Now did it do something? Look, oh, that's all gone. Well, it's something. Who is it? Shows me how to see that sheet. We'll figure it out, huh? Okay, that looks awesome. So we did some code and we tested it at least to a point where nothing crashed. It didn't give us any sort of problems. That's good. I'm going to continue on here. <clears throat> now, when we actually run this, we would like to get rid of this group box 32 outline. Not looking very good. So we're going to use the immediate window to do that. And the immediate window is kind of like it sounds. Um, it's just some code that runs immediately. So they say press Control G open the immediate window go to my view code and then press control G there's that immediate window and we've got this command we're going to enter active sheet dot group boxes dot oops Visible equals false. Now I've still got a typo there, and it says 
Object required, you silly. Well, it's saying that because it doesn't know which sheet I want because I made a typo there. Sheet. So now I can. Didn't give me any error message. And sure enough, my fruit box is gone. Now they say for us to close that Google Basic Editor window. Save, close, save all. Okay, so that was pretty intense. We are going to be testing this thing and sort of sharing it with other people. But this is a really good breaking point for us. Video. Thank you.